Hello Driving Intelligence Community. Behind me you see a 1997 GMC 1500 with the 5.7 liter engine. The only problem is it's got a check engine light. Diagnostics indicate that there are three of four oxygen sensors bad, two downstream, one upstream. Uh, interestingly enough, all of them are showing a heater circuit failure. So uh, given this, this truck has 160,000 miles on the odometer, I think it's time to change them anyway. They've never been replaced, the original oxygen sensors. first step was to hook up the, the diagnostic tool I've got into the OBD2 port and I've got the engine temperature up pretty high close to its, uh, its normal operating temperature 199 degrees and I'm monitoring fuel trims but down here I'm looking at the, uh, the oxygen sensors both uh, sensor ones on both banks and you can see it's oscillating but it actually looks like it's oscillating somewhat slow um, from my uh, perspective, they may be tired and worn out. I doubt that these oxygen sensors have been ever, ever been changed. This vehicle's sitting at over 155,000 miles. At least the oxygen sensors are operating and sending information back to the computer. The problem with the, uh, the engine codes that I had gotten before was that the, uh, the heater circuit is showing a malfunction. And you can see that both uh, oxygen sensors are in closed loop. So the computer is using the, the oxygen content in the exhaust to modify fuel trims. So at least that's also good news. But we need to check that, uh, that heater circuit in three of the four oxygen sensors. Starting with the basics, notice that bank one is indicated by the side of the engine that has cylinder one, and therefore bank two is the side of the engine that has cylinder two. Bank one on this vehicle is the driver's side. The upstream sensors, B1, S1, B2, S2, are used by the computer to indicate the efficiency of the combustion and adjust fuel trims accordingly. The exhaust gas is then passed through the catalytic converter where the noxious uh, pollutants are converted into harmless combustion products. So that's uh, oxides of nitrogen to nitrogen, uh, carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide, and then you'll also see that one of the combustion products is water. Yep, your engine actually produces water during the combustion process, and that's why you see water dripping from your exhaust pipe. The downstream sensors are used to monitor the performance of the catalytic converter to make sure that those noxious pollutants are being converted into harmless gases. Finally, we need to talk about the heater circuit function. Each of these oxygen sensors is a four-wire sensor which indicates that there is a heater circuit in the oxygen sensor and it's heating that oxygen sensor up to several hundred degrees allowing the, uh, the sensor to monitor oxygen levels. Uh, the computer is indicating to us that uh, three of the four sensors has a failure in this circuit, and that's what we need to test for today. Here is bank one, sensor two. Easy access to the connector. And the last one I'll need to get, which is probably most limited access, is bank two, sensor one, on the passenger side of the vehicle. I'm going to start off with bank two, sensor two, which has a box to protect the connector. Not a bad design. I'm going to have to clean up this, this bolt, remove that, and that box should come off. I was able to remove bank one, sensor two, but not without difficulty. There was a lot of corrosion here. The other two loosened up pretty nicely. I had to use a lot of PB blaster and actually work the, uh, the sensor in and out in and out to let that uh, PB blaster get in there and actually push some of that crud back in the exhaust. And eventually it came out without any problem. So I've checked the voltage for the heated circuit. It's only coming up 8.9 volts, so there might be a corrosion issue here. I did check for ground to make sure I did get a ground and I've got a good ground, got good continuity. So that's probably not the problem in terms of, of it being the ground, but maybe there's a voltage issue going to the sensor. So I installed the new oxygen sensor just to plug up the exhaust pipe and I started the vehicle, let it run while I tested the voltage and the voltage came up to close to 12 volts on the, uh, on the heater circuits. If you have a heater circuit failure, and you want to test it on the sensor itself. Typically what I'm finding is that the uh, 
the heater circuit wires are the same color, so these two black wires indicate heater circuit. You want to take your voltage ohm meter to those two prongs that are associated with those two black wires and determine if you've got an open circuit indicating a failure. I'm testing the heater circuit now and I'm getting 4.9 ohms. With the new sensor, I'm getting a much lower ohm reading. These graphs represent the oscillation of the O2 sensor with the uh, varying oxygen in the exhaust stream. The top one is the only original oxygen sensor remaining. This definitely shows that they're os oscillating properly. I have to do a uh, codes check to see if anything pops up indicating that there's a potential system error that uh, is not showing up with a uh, check engine light. All three sensors were installed and ended up with a new failure code. I was able to resolve all of the heater circuit failures that were on those three oxygen sensors, but then I ended up with a new code, P0153, which showed up very quickly after installing the oxygen sensors. So went back to the store, exchanged it for uh, hopefully what is not a defective uh, oxygen sensor. Interestingly enough, when I opened up the box of the one I got from the store, that box appeared to already been open even though the sensor looked new. So um, this one was in a sealed plastic bag. Maybe there was some con contamination that uh, got to the sensor, but uh, hopefully with this one being in a sealed bag, this will work. So that's just some uh, advice for you. If you get to the auto parts store and you open it up, you should always inspect the parts before you take them out because sometimes people return parts that they've already used or return to use parts. Oh, I gotta love old vehicles, uh, some of them at least. So I've cleared all of the oxygen sensors. They're all operating properly now. And now I've got a new code. <laughs> At least it keeps me in business. So after driving for a while, I've got the same error code again, P0153, and uh, that cannot be the oxygen sensor again. That just doesn't make sense. But along with it, I'm getting a P0125, which is an insufficient coolant temperature for the closed loop fuel control, which tells me that it's probably a temperature management issue of the engine coolant versus it being an oxygen sensor. This didn't show up before when I had the P0153. I also noticed when I was uh, monitoring the engine coolant temperature and the inlet air temperature that the engine coolant temperature was not coming up like it should. It was stagnant at 45 degrees, for example, and then it would jump. So it's telling me either the engine coolant temperature sensor is bad or I've got a thermostat that needs to be replaced or both. In summary, replacing those three oxygen sensors did resolve the heater circuit failures. And all the oxygen sensors are operating properly as I monitor them on my um, my diagnostic tool. Problem is that the uh, the owner needed the truck, and I didn't have time to resolve the uh, the two new codes P0125 and P0153. I'm thinking that this is probably an engine coolant temperature management issue. So the uh, the P0125 is probably leading to a P0153, a slow response from the oxygen sensor because the engine coolant is not heating up as it should. Huge delay in engine coolant temperature increase. Once the, uh, the owner gives me the truck back, I'll resolve that and post my, my results. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe.